owl stood in a field of very fresh grass. Halia welcomed him. Maaga ka, ha? Halia said. Excited lang po, Owl said in respect. After walking up a hill, Owl finally saw Kate sitting on the grass. As Kate turned her head, Owl knelt down to her and gave her a hug. There you are, Owl said. You made it, Kate replied in tears. Halia apologized that they themselves couldn't open a door to the middle dimension. They also have rules to go by. Kate said it was okay, clasped their hands together and bowed. She thanked the goddess for all she had done and promised to carry her end of the bargain as well. The moon will always light your way, the goddess replied as she handed Kate her new white lady mask. With this, she will have the full strength to fulfill her duty as the new moon guardian. People watched intently at the live streams the Hive broadcasted. Converted citizens were tasked to report and defend the country against an incoming threat. The chairman said that it was their duty as citizens of the Philippines to intercept and eliminate the owl. The country will be able to move on to modernity once remnants of the past were removed permanently. This message was converted into language the Cicada understood simultaneously. There were humans that hadn't been converted yet, that went on the hunt as well. These were the Filipinos that were afraid of refusing and going against those who were in power. A lot of disputes happened. Some families split because of the different opinions. There were a small number of idealists that did not want to just blindly follow something so obviously wrong. Why and how on earth was killing off the country's only hope, the way forward? If anything, this could permanently make things worse. Behind the scenes, the chairman was scrambling to power up the Black Tau Tower where Athena was. A small army of cicadas stormed the building. Little did they know that the Black Tau was caused by Raven. Brent sent her to follow Athena while he prioritized the sheltering of the survivors. Raven stuck to her promise of taking care of Athena. Working through her pain, both physical and psychological, she climbed up the tower quietly. The summer sun was slowly dipping as the quiet but tense afternoon rolled by. It was supposed to be Black Saturday, but there were no people on beaches or churches. It was too silent and empty, as if war was about to break any second. All the while, the chairman was slowly creeping back into his main tower where Athena was. In just a few hours, he thought power will come back on and he'll have the ability to see the future. A single woman will never be able to get through his forces. But Raven was persistent. Before she went back to the city, Brent had mentioned that his son was about to return. This gave Raven a renewed sense of strength and hope. She was just three floors below where Athena would be when she got too overwhelmed. At this point, she had lost her weapons and were smacking the cicadas with the guns that she had. There weren't enough rubber bullets in her pack. Suddenly, all the cicadas stopped attacking and looked like they were sensing some threat. Raven looked on as all the cicadas that were attacking her suddenly charged up the next floor. As the last cicada turned a corner up to the floor, the noise of growls and screams died down. Hobbling, Raven followed as the dust had settled. In the middle of the next floor was Owl. All the cicadas seemed to be sleeping. None were injured. Owl turned his head to Raven and apologized for being late. The families that refused to join in the hunt for the owl locked up their windows and doors for the night. They all knew that doing this meant that they were betraying the country. But to them, 
This meant that the country had sold its soul to the devil. It was too late. There was a full moon that evening. Everyone that didn't want to follow the chairman's orders fell asleep after staring at the moon. People all over the Philippines suddenly dropped where they stood. All of them found themselves in a very calming dream. In the haze, they sat with the white lady. She told them that if they didn't want to give up their freedom and their lives to the chairman, that they should gather around the cicada statues at midnight to fight with them for the future they all should have. Most of them were scared. They were only people after all, not super-powered individuals. The white lady understood this clearly and told them that they don't have to go if they can't. But whichever they decide to do, she promised that the moon will always light their way. The real power of change lies within each and every one of them, the people.